Hi guys, it's Aslan and I just want to welcome you back to my channel. Um, today I actually want to talk to you guys about DPO, which is days past ovulation, and the symptoms that um, I experienced every, sing um, every day leading up to pregnancy. Um, this was back in October 2017. I believe 18 17 something like that anyway so it's been a while but back then um, I was trying to get pregnant and I winded up getting pregnant on my very first try very excited um, I was at the time and but unfortunately that pregnancy was not successful and um, I winded up having a miscarriage at five weeks um, and I'm planning to post a, a whole video on um, my experience uh, with miscarriage. Right now I want to talk to you guys about um, days past ovulation, DPO, and I'm going to fast forward to day six and seven because the first few days it's kind of like not much going on. Um, I, TMI, well a lot of things are going to be TMI on my page, but um, I feel like as soon as I ovulate, I can tell by my nipples because they get um they start getting sensitive different levels of how sensitive they are um but i pretty much can tell like that's my very first sign is my nipples being sensitive after that then they start becoming sore and full i have some notes here um this is what i wrote down and after i ovulated and this is what i wrote down. i wrote everything down um, i'm very in tune to my body so everything i feel um, I, it was like a journal. I was writing it down. DPO6 and 7. Very similar. Sore boobs. I was tired and I monitor my discharge, my uh, cervical mu mucus. Very important. Always monitor. It, it's telling. It tells you exactly where you are in your cycle. Um, so my, my mucus, my cervical mucus was creamy. And I kept getting like little like um, like pulling on my uterus, um, just randomly, just like little like really really light, like not like a cramp, just really light. Um, I had really vivid dreams, very random vivid dreams. It has to do with your uh, progesterone being really high. You tend to have um, really vivid dreams. You remember them. Um, it, you, if pay attention, it usually happens after you ovulate. Um, I kept waking up. I was really thirsty. Like these are all things that are not normal for me. So I just kept writing them down. Um, my cervix was really high. It was soft and it was open. Now, in another video, I'll explain how to um, test your cervix. But basically, you want to take your finger put it all the way up and you have to pretty much you won't get it the first time you won't understand it the first time but if you keep doing it every single day and see the difference I check my cervix um, pre ovulation and after 60 PO my um, my cervix was high it was soft and it was open um, my teeth were sensitive and my gums were bleeding which is not normal for me so I decided to write that down. Um, and, but I do hear that that is common in some women, uh, that they get really sensitive teeth when they're pregnant. Um, however, 60 PO is way too early to know if you're pregnant. But I just thought it was different, so I wanted to write it down. Um, my, I, just because I wanted to document it, I decided I was going to take the test. I don't recommend it. It's too early to tell if you're pregnant. So. It won't come up um, but I took a test and it was negative um, so fast forward to 8 DPO uh, sore boobs I was very sleepy discharge was still creamy um, I had like dull like uh, like achy uh, sort of period like not um not really cramps, but it was more like period, like like an achy uterus. And I started to get acne. That's not normal for me. I don't, um, I don't get acne any, 
more, I should say. But um, usually I'm okay in the face area. Um, 9 DPO. Sore boobs. Again, very, very like dull, like pulling and uh, achy uterus. Um, now I do my basal body temperature every single morning when I wake up. I will do a separate video on how to take your basal body temperature. I think it's important for women that have PCOS or if you're having trouble getting pregnant, it is the most accurate way to, um, to, to know when you have ovulated. Um, it's important to know so when you are trying. Um, so my basal body temperature, there was a dip and uh, my cervix was still soft, high and open, still creamy discharge. I was very sleepy. Um, and for documenting purposes, I just I, I was taking tests every single day um, and it came back negative. So now we're going to go on to 10 DPO. Again, yeah, um, sore boobs. I had um, my discharge was a different color. My um, my cervical mucus was a different color. It was still creamy. It was a different color as it's, um, you know, it had like maybe like a, a different color tint, if you want to say, um, which is also common. Women that are pregnant um, had acne. That's not normal again for me. Um, so a lot of these are repeated. And as your cycle goes, these things do change. Um, if you're pregnant, it's more of it, like more acne or something, because progesterone is skyrocketing. The uterus is very achy. Um, it just felt like uh, like heavy and like pulling and you know, not normal after like my period wasn't anywhere close. So um, that shouldn't it wasn't really normal for me. I took a pregnancy test and it was positive. Um, so it was very, very light, but I saw something and I remember I, I called my best friend and I'm like, listen, I don't know if I'm seeing things, but I'm pretty sure there's a line on this thing. Like, please look at this. Let me know what you think. And she was like, I don't know. I kind of want to say I see something, but it's, I don't really know. At this point, I'm only 10 DPO. Like I took a picture, so I would just stare at the picture or whatever. Um, I was like, I, I just felt it in my heart, um, all the symptoms, like everything. 12 DPO, I knew I would get a more accurate. If it was already light, it should be getting uh, darker as the days go on. Your pregnancy tests um, do get darker. There has been something in my face this entire time. And <laughs> that's why I keep touching my face. Um, it's like a feather or something. Anyways, so 12 DPO. I'm cramping more. I am I have sore boobs and at this point I went to see my doctor and normally doctors don't do blood work or anything um, so early on 12 days past ovulation um, but my doctor knows that I have PCOS she did it for me I, I don't know because most doctors will not see you until, until you're I think I believe it's your six week of pregnancy doctors won't see you I don't know how I got lucky. God, I have no idea, but my doctor decided to see me. Um, and my HCG levels came back at 29, which is low, very low. However, I was only 12 days past ovulation, which is so early. The doctor was like, it is low, but you are so early on. I want you to come back and we're going to retest you. Um, now these numbers are supposed to double if you're taking it every other day the number should double um, anyways so at this point we know I'm pregnant um, some people their their pregnancy tests don't even show up yet it's it's really early on still so 13 DPO um, I was still getting like cramps sore boobs 14 DPO I was I got less cramps apparently I only got three cramps um, it was much less than the day before and, um, my boobs were now full and really sore and full. Those were my symptoms when I got pregnant. Um, 
you know, a lot of times you'll get all these symptoms and you won't be pregnant. It's very, very, very similar to, you know, if you were to get your normal period or whatever. Um, I happened to be pregnant that cycle. Like I said, it was my first try um, and I was fortunate enough with PCOS to get pregnant on my very first try. Things here is to check your basal body temperature. So always check your mucus, cervical mucus, and to check um, your cervix. Please wash your hands and then check your cervix. Um, it's, it's, it could be a little challenging to figure out your cervix, but you know, if you're, t if you're checking every day, you start to get a feel for how it works, what it's supposed to feel like. Um, so I highly recommend those things. So yeah, those, that's what I wrote on my days past ovulation. Please comment below. Tell me, uh, what your experience was, um, whether you were pregnant or not, but, um, more or less what, what your symptoms were post ovulation. Um, I feel like when I was going through this, I, I was searching other girls to see what their symptoms were. I was always curious to see what they were experiencing. A lot of times we experience the same things. Sometimes we, it's completely different. Um, but it was very helpful. So comment below, share your story. Let me know um, the things that you felt so I can know also going forward, um, you know, my next time trying, um, you know, things could be completely different. It could be completely different from this list that I wrote here, you know, so, but I did enjoy documenting it um, for the, in the process. I know it could be nerve wracking, but hang in there. A lot of these signs do do tell you a story. So they do tell you, you know, oh look, you were pregnant, like look at all this. I do want to say that a lot of these symptoms that I wrote here were not normal for me. Um, like, I'm not always sleepy like that, so I kept getting sleepy. That's not really that normal. Um, Acne is not too, it happens, but it's not too normal. Um, the cramping, the cramping isn't really that normal. The only time I cramp is when I ovulate. Once I ovulate, I don't cramp. Um, I'm very in tune to my body and I never, that's never really like a thing for me. I, ov I cramp, I ovulate, and it's gone. After that, the main things for me are the boobs. My boobs get sore. Um, once in a blue moon i'll get acne i'll get like a pimple here or there breakout or whatever um but those are just like my normal symptoms it's nothing crazy uh you know period symptoms or anything so for me to add all this extra stuff in i, I was just like hmm you know am i pregnant or am i looking too much into this you know and um it turns out i was pregnant so i'm happy that i did document this because my next time I'll be like oh that's similar to this time and you know I want to thank you guys so much for watching and tune in to my next few videos I'm gonna talk about miscarriage and other things um, and topics about cycles and PCOS I hope you guys have enjoyed um, I'm sure you guys can compare or share your stories um, on your days past ovulation to see if they're similar or if they're not um, comment below again please subscribe and thank you so much for watching till next time